Hello and welcome to The Fit Show. I'm Hannah Gordon bringing you another update in the world of bodybuilding and fitness. Today is Tuesday, June 28th, and we have our very first In the Gym segment with bodybuilding legend Milos Sarchev. We go now to Milos's own Coliseum Gym in Fullerton, California. Hi, my name is Milos Sarchev. I'm a professional bodybuilder and owner of a Coliseum Gym here in Fullerton true mecca of uh, bodybuilding here in Orange County. Also official gym for Flex Magazine photo shoot, and today host of a fit show powered by bodybuilding.com. We are here in a training segment uh, and I'm gonna choose today a chest, as I do believe chest is very important muscle group for all of us uh, bodybuilders. And unfortunately most of the guys do not know how to stimulate chest correctly. I'm here today to show you all the little secrets I learned in 20 years of my practice as I'm a trainer to most of the champions uh, nowadays in pro bodybuilding and also in other sports. So let's get on the floor and do the chest and I promise you from today on you're going to feel chest like never before. Here we are in the Coliseum gym. I want to introduce you to my training partner, Fred Marcelo Caravel, NPC competitor preparing for nationals uh, later this year. He's going to help me demonstrate what I'm trying to tell you today. Uh, I want to tell you from the very beginning, 20 years ago when I walked into the gym in Yugoslavia, I was in for a big surprise. I've seen two guys in a gym training. One was doing 80 kilos, 180 pound bench press, and had enormous chest, phenomenal, professional level. The other guy was doing over 200 kilos, 440 pounds, and had virtually no chest. He was an average looking guy with a decent development, but uh, his chest was really underdeveloped. And that was the first thing that I noticed. I said, okay, something is not wrong here. Something is wrong here. Uh, if this guy can lift uh, so much weight, how come he doesn't have a chest? And I started asking him questions. And as soon as I realized that really in bodybuilding, what we're doing, we're building the body. Most important thing is to stimulate the muscle that we are training. So if you're doing the chest, let's stimulate the chest. The other guy was going for a power and just wanted to lift. So he was using all the supporting muscle groups like front delt, side delt, triceps, even lats to do the lift. So this is one thing that I want to emphasize for you. When you do the bench press and everybody does it, do it correctly. And I'm going to show you little tricks and Marcel is going to demonstrate for me. Uh, we have to keep the elbows out in order to stimulate the chest. If elbows come in, chest will take over. So make sure that elbows are out. Expand the rib cage as if uh, it's not expanded, front delt will take over. If it's expanded, chest is primary mover. Grip, if it's wide, would hit outer chest, and inner we go, closer we go, inner chest get involved. So if you want to develop inner chest, have a closer grip. Outer chest, go wider grip. Now we have a different uh, uh, positions. Decline, flat, incline benches with angle will determine which muscle fiber is going to be involved. If you do the decline, lower chest fiber is going to be involved, flat middle, and incline upper chest. However, if you only have a bench press, you can still do all three parts by lowering the bar to the stomach if you want to develop lower chest, and going to the neck if you want to do the upper chest fibers. So let's uh, see uh, Marcelo in action. Marcelo, by the way, is doing a, a bench press perfectly, so I choose him for a good example. Elbows are out, chest expanded all the way up, and you can see now he's using contraction on the way up. His goal is not to just push it, blast this off the chest, he's squeezing the muscle on the way up. So if you can focus really on this uh, uh, part, you can see that every fiber is fired, as he's right now stimulating only chest. Inhale down, usually, exhale up. Eccentric or lowering part of the movement is very controlled, contrary to most of the guys that just drop it down, even bounce off the chest. So you have to control it down, expand the chest, touch, full range of motion, and squeeze it up. So partial movement, partial development. Full movement, full development. Okay, let's do a couple of more. Picture perfect. Straight up. And one more. Okay, perfect. And you can see that. Marcel is 24 years old, and you can see he has a tremendous chest development uh, already. 
you know, probably world class at this point at the age of 24. And uh, the reason why is he's doing it perfectly. Each and every workout, he stimulates exactly the muscle that he wants. If you train chest, if you do the bench press for a chest, make sure you feel chest. So mind-muscle connection has to be 100% at all times. Let's move on to the second exercise. Here we are at the second exercise for a chest. We just finished a, a basic bench press and we're going to incline barbell bench press. Uh, the difference here is the uh, angle of the bench, which is an incline position which would automatically stimulate upper fibers. We're going to do the same concept of keeping the elbows out, expanding chest, lowering down exactly like we did at the bench press, but I'm going to show you a couple of more tricks. So let's uh, go, Marcel. Again, Grip is somewhat wider than a, a shoulder width, which would work a little bit outer portion of the uh, chest. Going all the way to the neck with expanded chest and then pushing it straight up. One of the exercises that I uh, kind of modified in uh, this particular one is I do with a rest pause system. When he goes down at this position, he would rest for two seconds before he just squeeze on the way up. Lowering, very controlled, making a contraction right now and squeezing it up. What I'm trying to say with the contraction, most of the people just rest the barbell on the chest. That's not the case here. In this position, actually, he maximally stretches the chest but also contracts. So as you can see, his body is going down, his chest is going up. Perfect. Let's do a couple more. So chest is all the way expanded. Now, you're going to feel exact these fibers, I promise you, if you try to do it this way. Inhale down, expand the chest on top of the chest, pause for two seconds, and just squeeze it up. Don't power it up, squeeze it up. One more. And perfect. Rack. This is a modification of the incline barbell print, uh, bench press, and I really encourage you to try it this way. I had many pro bodybuilders. Uh, I don't want to name the names because uh, I'm going to respect the, uh, you know, their identity. Uh, that had actually very undeveloped chest. They were doing four or five hundred pounds on an incline bench press. I modified this. I got down to two hundred pounds, doing it exactly like this and the chest responded after years and years of training. So please, if you do have a problem with the upper chest, try this method. Expand the ribcage, chest up, elbows out, and try it with the pause. So when the barbell is all the way down, when you're resting the barbell on the chest, you don't relax the chest. You instead expand it as much as you can, contract as hard as you can, and then you don't push it with the power, you push with the contraction. That's a big difference. That's a Milo Shacher way of uh, inclined barbell bench press. We're continuing with the Milo Shacher's uh, chest uh, training secrets and uh, here we are at the flat bench flies. Now this is the exercise that I can really tell you mind-muscle connection can be established here. If you didn't have a chance in the other two exercises, flat and inclined bench, here is the exercise that you can finally get it. So uh, if I have a, a competitor a client that has a, a trouble, he, he really can't feel the chest, I make him do this exercise over and over. Marcel, Marcel is going to demonstrate uh, what I'm talking about here. Here is now, imagine you're not lifting weight, imagine you're on a stage posing. It's really not lifting move, it's a posing move. He's uh, opening up the arms, extending the ribcage, stretching the chest to the max, and when he's pushing it up, he is squeezing the chest just like in the most muscular pose. We all know what is uh, crab most muscular pose. So the same feeling of that particular pose, you apply in this uh, exercise. Inhale down, expanded chest, open arms, complete stretch, little pause, and now squeeze it up. I emphasize this uh, and probably boring you to tears with this, but that's most important. From here, focusing on a contraction of a pec muscle and absolute, complete, maximal squeeze at the top. This is another little trick. It's not only squeezing, it's squeezing as hard as we can in each and every rep. There's a contraction and there is maximal contraction. So even though this weight is easy and light for Marcelo, by squeezing the chest 100% at the top, 
he's exhausting his muscle fibers just like if he would do double the weight. So don't chain with the ego. If you want to establish mind-muscle connection, lower your weight and do exactly like this. So he's going to uh, go another three reps. Chest up, slowly open up. It's complete stretch. Now squeezing it. And this is rock hard right now. Couple more times. It's the most muscular pose on a stage next to Ronnie Coleman, right here. And one more. So you can see, I'm sure, even on the, this footage, contraction on his pecs muscles. That's a flat bench flies. We're moving on into the incline uh, dumbbell flies. Uh, we just did a flat bench, and the only difference here is the incline position. So Marcelo, as you can see, is expanding the chest again. But in incline position now, he's stimulating more upper fibers of the chest. If you really do the close-up on uh, his pecs, you can see his upper portion of the chest is just maximally contracted. Incline open and squeeze. Again, please, 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 don't go with the ego and heavy weight. Go with the lighter weight until you start completely feeling the upper fibers. Once you establish my muscle connection, then yeah, add the weight. But in, in general, we're talking about uh, amount of repetitions. I would encourage everyone to do at least eight to 10 repetitions, never less than that. This is an incline dumbbell flies. Thank you. In completing the dumbbell flies, we're doing now decline dumbbell flies. Uh, as we did a flat bench for middle, incline for upper, we're doing a decline for lower portion of the chest. Same principle. Expanded chest. In this position, you can now see the lower packs are the one that's getting the most stimulation. Squeezing, most muscular. Slow, open up. And you can see lower portion. And also, this exercise does a lot for serratus and intercostals. So this is one particular dumbbell move that I could encourage you to do for that crazy ripped look intercostal serratus along with the chest. So just two more times. Concept is stretched, chest up, and squeeze. And now you can see the lower portion does the work. This is a decline dumbbell flies. Thank you, Marcel. OK, I want to break one myth. And uh, we so far did just the free weights, heavy compound, barbell presses, dumbbell flies. You know, so this is a core, basic compound move for, for bodybuilding. However, machines are just as important. And I do want to emphasize this because a lot of guys think machines are for girls, girly exercises. It's quite the opposite. I want to tell you one very important concept. If you fail, let's say, on a 10 repetition doing a, a free weight uh, barbell bench press or a 10th repetition on a machine, the question that I would have to ask you guys, where do you think you're going to stimulate chest muscle fibers more? Doing a free weight or a machines? Most of you are going to say free weights, of course. However, the tr truth is exactly the opposite. As, uh, for free weights, we have to use stabilizing muscle groups and uh, secondary muscle groups, delts, triceps, everything else. And machines are designed to isolate that particular muscle, in this case chest. I promise you, if you fail on a 10th repetition on a bench press uh, doing machine, your chest is going to fail. If you fail on a 10th repetition on a free weight, it's not necessarily that your bench is going to be uh, failing, but some other supporting muscle group. And uh, Master Fitness did a test uh, for it. It was uh, published, actually, that yes, indeed, the more stimulation your muscle is going to get doing the machine. So I'm not saying that machines are better, but they're just as important. So when you uh, do some uh, training concept for a chest, I would encourage you to do some free weight moves and some machine moves, maybe a couple of pressing moves, a couple of flying moves. So if we uh, analyze the chest and we say, OK, we need more upper, middle, lower, outer chest, we design a program to reach exactly what we need. So whatever is your priority, put it first. And then you know, focus on the other aspects as well. So machines are just as good as uh, free weights. We're going here to the hammer uh, incline machine, one of the you know, best machines that I know for chest. Hammer, uh, hammer equipment is uh, very well known for uh, the machines. And uh, go ahead.
design of this machine is exactly this to isolate the chest muscle. So there is much less involvement of a triceps and deltoid due to the concept of uh, you know, just machine training. We are isolating that one particular muscle that we are working in this particular chest. This is chest. As you can see, Marcelo training with me for a couple of years has that concept of slow control movement on the way down and then uh, contracting the muscle on the way up. I do want to say this, that the speed of the movement can be you know, different. It can be very explosive, it can be very slow, and I would encourage all of you guys to try all different aspects. Not just slow. You can do slow eccentric and fast eccentric, or you can do the opposite, you know, which a you know, few people would do it, but I did it many times and it works phenomenally. I slow down, explosive up. This is something that is uh, pretty much common. However, do the opposite, Go slow up and uh, very fast down. So, and fast down. Yep. And slow up, but chest always expanded. Good. So, don't avoid machine. My message is combine machines with the free weights. And here we are at the final segment for chest training. We do the free weights, barbells, dumbbells, flat incline, decline benches, we went in the machines, and now we're doing the cables. Cable work is just as important as the uh, previous two, and I'm going to tell you uh, the little differences. When we do the dumbbells, uh, we go against the gravity, and we're doing a dumbbell flies, for example. At the uh, very top, due to the gravity effect, we don't really have to squeeze much harder. So it's the same contraction here or there. When we do the cables, it's quite the opposite we can reach the strongest contraction exactly at the top. So as uh, Marcel is going to demonstrate right now, you're going to see that incline dumbbell flies, which we just did uh, previously, or incline cable flies stimulate a different muscle group. Here, due to the fact that he's going with the low pulleys, cable pushes, more upper inner chest is stimulated than contrary to dumbbells, outer portion gets stimulated more. So, Upper middle portion is also, uh, I think, the weakest link to many bodybuilders. And this is the exercise that you can really uh, solve that problem. As you can see here, at this particular part, it's the strongest contraction. Dumbbells is a free move at that, the last couple of inches. On the cables, that's actually the hardest part. So same concept, extending chest up, pulling from the chest, and maximal contraction right here. A couple of more. So always remember, cables are perfect for a peak contraction at the end of the movement and stimulating those uh, muscle fibers that are hard to reach in uh, free weight exercises. Thank you. And here we are at the last exercise that I want to show you today. It's a high pulley cable crossover. Very popular exercise. Finishing move usually at the end of the uh, chest training. Very good for striations and the pectoralis. And there are several different ways we can do this. Marcel is going to demonstrate from a high pulleys, we can actually uh, hit the lower, middle, and upper chest again with the same concept. If you're standing erect and going straight down, a lower chest is in involved. If you lean just slightly forward and go in the middle, a middle uh, portion is involved. And if you bend over all the way and push up, we are doing the upper chest. So always remember for everybody, any concept, if you're pushing a decline, this is the angle it's a lower chest. Flat bench is the middle chest. Incline is the upper chest. So how the arm moves, that's how the muscle fibers are involved. In this particular exercise, we're doing the opposite. We're not laying on the bench. So if you're pushing it straight down, it's a lower chest, just like a decline. If you're going to the middle, it's just like we're doing a regular bench press. And if you lean forward, look from the side, and go in front, it's simulated incline press. So angles are very important, but my muscle connection is even more important. So let's demonstrate this. He's going to start with the basic, erected straight, and straight down. Yeah, This is a, a particularly most muscular pose, very common in the bodybuilding shows, for overall development, but you know, it hits the lower chest a little bit more. 
do a couple of reps of those. Strong contraction. You see, elbows are pointing up, so the chest is stretched. A lot of guys use a lot of deltoid on this one by manipulating the angles. If you put the el elbow in, your front delt is going to take over. So you want to exclude it, point the elbow up. Now lean forward a little bit. Now this is going to hit middle chest. The three reps of those. Always strong contraction. Always stretch. And the final segment all the way down and in front. Very few people do this, but I would encourage, it's hard to get striation in the upper chest. Upper portion, this is the exercise. So striations all the way up here with the clavicle bone. And that's it. This is as much as we have for a chest training. You can hit a couple of poses. Go right here and do the side chest. in preparation for Nationals 2005. And this is it for a chest training segment of Training with Milos in the Coliseum Gym for uh, featurebodybuilding.com. Please tune in next time and thanks for watching. This ends another episode of The Fit Show. Be sure to tune in next week as we get up close and personal with your favorite athletes. Until then, I'm Hannah Gordon. Thanks for watching.